welcome all of you. Uh, the invitation went out to the faculty and the members of the University Media Services and WIPB and WBST. This is kind of the uh, ball bell dedication. Uh, we spent a little time looking for somebody named Bill, thinking that we could get a Mr. <laughs> Bill to interview Mr. Ball, to inter but we decided not to take that approach. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, our new Dean of the College of Sciences and Humanities, Ron Johnstone, who has joined us. Ron, thanks. Um, and my role in this is simply to uh, introduce the provost, who will make some brief, <coughs> <laughs> excuse me, we're just testing, <laughs> some brief remarks <laughs> uh, as we uh, kick off this dedication ceremony. So Provost Warren Vanderhill, thank you. These are brief remarks, uh, not because of the occasion nor the people involved, but because uh, appropriate to some of the things I'm going to say about Ed and Virginia Ball. I have a tutorial that begins at 2.30 on a colloquium in the Honors College I'm teaching this term on the history of American wilderness. So that's an appropriate topic <laughs> with uh, these two people. Well, it's always a very enjoyable thing to introduce to an audience good friends, friends of mine and friends of this institution. Today I have that pleasure as I say a few words to you about Ed and Virginia Ball. Through the years I've enjoyed their companionship while fly fishing in various parts of the world, as many in this audience know. As a friend from my youth once said about fellow fly fishers, you can put anyone in a pair of waders in the middle of a trout stream and you'll find out all you need to know about that person. I couldn't agree more. And what I learned about these two remarkable people would fill several volumes. You all would agree who know them are truly interesting, creative, and above all, gracious human beings. But more to the point today, through the years they have, Virginia Ball pursues her interests with equal grace on a national and world scale in her adopted state of Indiana and in her home across from campus in the local community. The Autobahn and Wilderness Societies and the Sierra Club. A director at large on the 29-member National Wildlife Federation, she has served as chairman of its endeavor and participated actively in one of my favorites, the 99s, an international organization of women pilots. Time as a director on the board of the Governor's Youth Council, on the advisory boards for Connor Prairie Settlement and the White River Parks Commission, and on Wabash College's Long Range Planning Committee. A Texan and graduate of Baylor University for their commitment to these principles and of course for the endowment of this very important chair in telecommunications. Please join me now in acknowledging our good friends, Ed and Virginia Ball. It is now my privilege to turn the podium over to my fly fishing partner, Ed Ball. Good afternoon. I'm sort of overwhelmed by that introduction. I thought this was a recognition of uh, Steve Bell and an introduction to, uh, to him and uh, a little bit embarrassed to hear all that. I, um, I've always been a little bit intimidated in the academia here, and, but uh, we do have, I do have a little bit of a, a way to get to, on a level basis there because I was trout fishing with the uh, with, uh, provost and Madison River, and he got dunked all the way, <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> so that's one place that maybe I was a little bit ahead of him, but not very much. Well, thank you for inviting us here, and I hope these remarks will be appropriate, although I am overwhelmed by that introduction. When President John Wortham announced the purposes of all states' wings of the future campaign to raise the uh, $40 million in 1988, the key words were a commitment to excellence in teaching, supported by research and community service. With our long commitments in these various things, and uh, Warren has already, I don't have to go over these again because uh, he's already done that uh, in much more detail than I intended to, but we have had a long standing in, uh, interest in, uh, in broadcasting and in uh, uh, educational institutions, Virginia, as he's mentioned, and me, and uh, going way back into the 60s and the early 70s, the National Association of Educational Broadcasters, 
and the public broadcasting system. So uh, uh, when uh, these uh, objectives of the uh, Wings for the Future campaign were mentioned, uh, it was very easy us, for us to uh, uh, relate those purposes with our principal interests in the, in the communications. The center has already been committed to excellence in teaching. A distinguished and dedicated faculty was already housed in a splendid facility with state-of-the-art equipment, including specially designed electronic uh, uh, classrooms, studios, laboratories, chair, and telecommunications. A diligent search was made, numerous persons interviewed, and the final selection difficult. But there was one outstanding candidate who with his wife seemed uh, to possess all the qualifications remarkably well. His experience in the field of communications, a variety of opportunities to participate and uh, report on worldwide events in one of the most exciting and fascinating periods in the world's history were important elements of our, our selection. It almost seemed in reading their resume that Steve and Joyce Bell had been preparing themselves for this particular assignment during, during all their adult years. Our personal interviews confirmed that impression. It was a perfect match. They were well qualified to meet the three-way challenge of the Wings for the Future campaign, commitment to excellence in teaching, supported by innovative research, and to community service. In behalf, in behalf of the community, as well as the university, ourselves, we welcome you, Steve and Joyce. Wish you every success, rewarding personal satisfaction, and happiness as you accept our three-way challenge. Need to also take one minute and acknowledge another guest who's arrived and had the provost not taken so long we might have had time for the president of the university to make a couple of remarks <laughs> but president john worthen has joined us in the back also thank you <laughs> nothing personal sir <laughs> thank you steve bell is currently the edmund f and virginia ball chair in telecommunications as a matter of fact he's got a class in uh, in an hour. And with Virginia and Ed in the building, we do plan to have him to class on time today. Thank you. <laughs> Many have read about Steve Bell's arrival and his background, but I think it's important at this occasion to refresh just a few memories. 20 years as a news correspondent and anchor at ABC, five years for KYW TV in Philadelphia as an anchor, an anchor for USA Updates. Steve became familiar to millions as he anchored World News this morning and news segments of Good Morning America. When away from the desk, his assignments included presidential primaries, and conventions, overseas trips of Presidents Ford, Carter, and Reagan, elections in El Salvador, and Anwar Sadat's historic trip to Jerusalem. Steve covered the Newark and East Harlem riots, anti-war protests in Washington. Variety magazine at one point described his coverage of the Newark riots as one of the most moving and chilling examples yet of on-the-scene reporting. He covered the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and was on the scene when Senator Robert Kennedy was shot in L.A. Bell packed his bags for Vietnam in 1970. He and his camera crew were captured and held briefly by the Viet Cong. He managed to tape record a report of that incident while being held at gunpoint. He was ABC News Bureau Chief in Hong Kong. Bell has reported extensively from the People's Republic of China, including a two-month stint with Ted Koppel as they co-anchored a documentary on that country. In 1985, Steve Bell returned to Vietnam for the 10th anniversary of the end of that war and filed the first live U.S. satellite report from Vietnam to the United States. He's received two national Emmy nominations, three local Emmy awards, an overseas press club award, and a headliners award for his reporting, his university. Joyce Bell, his wife, is an accomplished vocalist and musicologist. And they have two daughters, Hillary and Allison, one in Louisville, one in Newark. We worked the Louisville connection very strongly during the interview process. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming uh, Mr. Steve Bell.
Thank you, Joe. Uh, just two corrections since I'm in the business of teaching people how to be accurate and, and all that sort of thing. <laughs> One, our younger daughter is in Newark, or not in Newark, she's in New York City and being an aspiring actress, that's a big difference in her mind, I, I assure you. Uh, and, and the second is, I, I don't know how you could have left it out in that extensive introduction of Ed, uh, but there was no mention of scuba diving. Uh, he does get dunked all the way, but <laughs> it's for, for a different purpose. And uh, that had no small uh, part in our first interview conversation together. Uh, we hadn't been talking 10 minutes in his office when I came out here to uh, interview last spring before Ed had gone over to the drawer and had all his log books out on the table and we were going over the various dive sites that uh, we had shared and, and experiences that we uh, have in mind to recreate in, in the not too distant future. Uh, after sitting here and listening to all I have heard uh, in the in the past 30 minutes or 20 minutes, uh, I, I am not only more pleased than ever to be here, uh, but I think Joyce would share with me uh, even a sense of awe and uh, responsibility, and in my case, inadequacy, to possibly live up uh, to all that has been invested in, in this chair and this opportunity. But uh, I want to assure you that I accept the challenge and the opportunity and the responsibility. And with a lot of hand holding from Joe and numerous other people uh, seated in this room, uh, hopefully it can uh, end out to be of benefit to the, to the students here and, and to the university in a larger sense. Uh, I don't think it's, it's uh, out of place to say that a lot of people since Joyce and I said we were coming here, uh, said, why are you going to or coming to Muncie, Indiana? Uh, and after explaining that we are from Oskaloosa, Iowa, and this is a big city by our standards, uh, the reasons are really very simple uh, and very obvious, it would seem to me. Uh, first of all, having an opportunity to come to the campus of a major teaching institution and be part of that exciting process is one that I've had in mind ever since uh, I took a summer leave of absence from my first big job to go back to Northwestern and finish my master's degree uh, solely to have my ticket punched, as uh, the military would say. Not said, well, it looks like about three hours to me, and she said, sure, go ahead and answer it. Uh, so then we came, I came out and, and had the interviews. And I can't tell you how impressed I was. And continue. this university is known as an educational institution that has just leaped ahead in recent years. Uh, under her was an excellent student. And he said, when my daughter was going to college, her uh, guidance counselor uh, had balls a sleeper uh, by Eastern parlance. Uh, an institution that kids growing up in the East may not have heard of or know a lot about, but if you're looking for a uh, right through the graduate programs that exist at this institution. And so it didn't take very much time before I realized that Ball State uh, was a very special university and this was a very special chair uh, with a unique mandate that I hope was uniquely designed for someone with my background. Uh, delighted to be here. Uh, I am having a ball. I can't vouch for my students. Uh, as some of you know and others may not, we are literally creating. Oh, hi, Tracy. Uh, <laughs> she can, don't talk to Tracy afterwards. Give me a couple more weeks. Uh, we, uh, we are literally creating from whole cloth a course in the media and the political process, uh, analyzing and and uh, documenting the election coverage as it goes along in a year that is literally rewriting the book, the textbook for the media and the political process. And it's exciting to be part of that. I hope the students share in that excitement. And I hope that's the kind of thing that uh, this practitioner who would never try to pass himself off as a scholar, 
can bring to this university community and working uh, in cooperation with all of you uh, help to achieve the very lofty goals. Thank you very much. We have just two very quick small items of business. The first is that uh, Steve's uh, photo and the uh, chair endowed with Edmonds and Virginia's name will be up uh, in our office facility uh, to recognize this. And you do have to give this back. Thank you. <laughs> and the, maybe the tougher assignment after a conversation I had with uh, Ed Ball yesterday is to ask Ed and Virginia to please come up uh, and stand uh, alongside this um, red thing. Please. As they're making their way up to, I do want to acknowledge uh, a lot of work by John Iden put into not only today's get together, but what uh, we're about to kind of undo. Uh, as a way, on behalf of the people that occupy this building, we'd like the two of you to kind of lift this off, and it's our way of saying thanks. Yes, I can say thank you. It's always nice to be considered a team, which we are, and I'm sure you are too. Welcome to the Paul State. Thank you all for coming, and uh, the guest. far enough away from Indianapolis, so we're outside of the Indianapolis order. They don't like to say anything. They got the veneer, but not only grudgy. It was there, but it wasn't elaborated on at all. Her last name is Ball, Tracy Ball. Oh, sure. Yeah. But no relation? No, I don't think she's any relation. Right here, she was born. She will have her baby in uh, March. She can still travel, but when she gets there, she can't travel. Her husband here this last weekend. And it'll be close, and we can be there when, he, when the time arrives. <laughs> Well, I certainly wish we were here, we had been here this week. I, I was listening on the radio, and it was so sad because last week they were up against a superior team that was not paying attention to the game. A much better team than most people think, which is out to prove it. And, and they did. They did. Oh, well, it was a good trip. There'll be better days.